Today we have a pretty special tuner here in the shop. Um, we get a lot of really neat equipment, but this uh, this is definitely in the top uh, one percent of what we've seen. Um, it's a Sakara um, Model One broadcast tuner, as illustrated here in the back. Um, actually, the Sakara Model One broadcast monitor, uh, made by the Sakara company uh, here in the USA. Um, this particular uh, tuner, not this one here in front of us, but the, the series of Sakara tuners came out in 1973 um, at a time where there was some pretty fierce competition. Um, both the Marantz uh, 10B had been around for a little bit and the um, Marantz MR78 had just come out a year before. So it was, um, those three are American made tuners considered the best ever made. Um, much better than the British counterparts. Um, a lot had to do with the fact that in the United States, um, designers had uh, the additional challenge of having to design tuners to work over significant distances, unlike the UK, which is a more compact um, uh, area. The, the US um, had much greater distances between stations. So the theory is that uh, those three tuners, the Marantz, the Macintosh, and the Sakara were the absolute best of the best. Um, among those three American models, this was the most sophisticated and the more ex most expensive by a lot. In 1974, when this tuner came out, it was almost $1,800, which is almost the price of a car. Um, during its run, which ended in the late 90s, it went all the way up to about $4,000 in this variation. And there were other variations, the reference models that exceeded $10,000. So some crazy numbers, but I guess really reasonable or within reason, uh, considering this is more of a lab instrument than it is a home piece of equipment. Um, and you can tell by its construction, by its design, by its parts quality and uh, its operation. It's really uh, was designed for radio stations to be able to analyze their signals and uh, understand what their performance limitations were. And, um, you know, and, and it was quickly adopted by homeowners that wanted the absolute best of the best. So, um, one of the neat features, obviously, is the uh, built-in oscilloscope, uh, hard to miss. Uh, it's really neat. It has uh, it's a couple of functions. Uh, there are three modes, uh, panoramic, uh, display tuning, and the tuner vector. And then there's a fourth input, uh, the external vector, which is in case you want to feed it an external signal. Um, so I'll go through those features uh, pretty quickly. I am not an expert in this, but um, I know enough to at least make a video and, and be dangerous. <clears throat> this is a um, particular model comes in a rack uh, mount kit. Uh, it's a factory rack mount uh, made for this device uh, and it gives it a really cool industrial look. Um, as you can see, it's got a 19 inch rack, uh, probably take about uh, four rack spaces if you wanted to rack mount this, but it works perfectly well on, on its own feet. Uh, it does have a pretty low lip on it, so it has to overhang whatever shelf you put it on or you'd have to put it on higher feet in order to clear the shelf. So just a note, in case you end up being the lucky guy to own this tuner. Um, all right, let's go through the features real quick here. Um, I've got a speaker set up so we can hear what's happening and uh, I'm gonna do my best to hold the camera at a good spot. So I'm gonna turn up the music a tiny bit so you can hear what's happening. All right, so the first feature um, is the panoramic view on the oscilloscope. Now mind you, I don't have a very strong antenna here. I'm just using a, a whip antenna because my good antenna is all the way across the shop. So things aren't gonna be as dramatic on the display as they could be if you had a good strong signal. Um, the first one is the, um, the panoramic display. Um, it really uh, is a good indication of both signal strength and centering. And it's pretty cool as you turn the knob what you see is you see the actual radio stations move across the display. Uh, this particular line here is our centering line. Um, so the station we're listening to is right here right now. Here's this peak signal right there. So as I move it, um, it ends up centering within the spectrum and, and allows us to both see the signal strength and amplitude and the uh, centering to know that we've tuned it to the center spot properly. And as you turn the dial, you can see other stations kind of come across the horizon from left to right. Really need a visual interpretation of what's going on in your spectrum. Okay. The second uh, 
option here is the display tuning and uh, tuner vector. I'll go to tuner vector because I know that one the best. This is a representation of uh, the stereo signal itself. Um, if we tune to a, a, sp a spoken station like this, you'll see a straight line um, illustrating that there's very little stereo happening. As we go through the spectrum and tune in a station that's got music on it, it'll represent the differences between the left and the right channel, and that's it, expanding uh, left to right. All right, other things on here that are interesting, there's a Dolby FM um, setting. Uh, there's the ability to mute the signal while you're tuning. Um, there's the automatic mode for the mono and stereo, and then there's the ability to turn off the, the display panel. Here it is with it brightly lit. So it's a, it's a gorgeous tuner, um, as you can see, and um, it looks a lot more sophisticated than the 1970s, which is kind of neat. Um, and I saw that uh, Sakura is still making tuners nowadays, keeping the same design language, uh, which just tells you how famous this tuner is. Um, let's have a look at the back, because the back is also laden with some pretty neat features that you don't see every day. Um, the connection for the antenna is a 30, 375 ohm, pretty standard stuff. I'm using a, an adapter here. Uh, it's got a captive power cord and a fuse here. Um, the output signals use CAMA connectors, which is kind of neat. Again, laboratory grade connectors, often found on Mark Levinson gear. I know that Mark Levinson tried pretty hard to make these connectors become the norm. They're way superior to an RCA connector, um, and they're smaller and more compact, which is a great design feature for anybody making a piece. Um, they lock into place, they have, they're spring-loaded and have a little retaining piece. So really, I wish this had taken uh, over the, uh, the connector world in, in, in stereos in the 70s, but unfortunately it did not. It stayed pretty much just for laboratories. So we've got a fixed set of outputs here and then a variable set of outputs um, with a variable adjustment right here. Uh, here are the external vectors we talked about uh, being able to provide a signal and use the scope to analyze some other signal that you're feeding from here. And then um, adjustments for the scope, focus intensity, centering, and the width in the center of the panoramic sweep as well. So pretty much this is uh, set and forget. And then lastly, here's an accessory. I imagine this is for a remote or some other sort of device to control this with. Go back, back over for you uh, from the top. You can kind of see the, uh, the cathode ray tube and uh, you can get a glimpse at the sort of quality and isolation and, and design that they, they used on this tuner. All right, let's talk about the condition. Um, it's it's very good condition, but you know not perfect. Uh, there are very slight marks here on the top lip, and the cover has a couple of um, sort of paint marks on it. But overall, pretty presentable. Important things: the glass, the buttons, the backlighting is is all really really good. So from the Front display. I don't see anyone being disappointed by the condition of this device. Um, it takes about 30 minutes to warm up, it says in the literature, and this has been running for about 30 minutes, I guess, for the tube to warm up, the cathode ray tube, and for all the circuitry to come up to, to speed. So they do recommend uh, at least 30 minutes before enjoying it. Um, okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you've, uh, you've enjoyed this video.